With this lesson, we're going to move on to the final two parts of the year 13 syllabus, computational thinking and problem solving, and then we're going to move on to further programming. Now, for the paper three syllabus, you could be asked pseudocode-based questions from these two sections. However, the majority of the theory finishes at the last section, which is artificial intelligence. The concepts we're going to be covering in here can be examined in both paper three and paper four. Paper four in the form of programming in Python and paper three in the form of theory questions and pseudocode. We're going to begin by focusing on the first part of section 19, computational thinking and problem solving, and that is understanding linear and binary searching methods. Now this builds on what we covered in year 12. You should be familiar with the pseudocode for linear and binary search. However, if you're not, we're going to be covering the basics of that. At the same time, you should be familiar with coding both binary and linear searches in Python as well. Anyway, let's begin by checking some of your prior knowledge. Hopefully you know what a stack is. Hopefully you know what a queue is and what type of structure it is. Is it last in, first out or first in, first out? You should also know what a linked list is, the use of two nodes, a data node and a pointer, and how you could implement the above using an array or a set of arrays. Now using a linked list, you should be able to implement both a stack and a queue as well. And if you're familiar with that, you've got a bit of a head start. Let's begin as usual by looking through some key terms. Linear search, a method of searching any list where you start at the beginning and check each item until you find the item or the list ends without containing the value. Binary search on the other hand is a method of searching an ordered list by testing the value of the middle item and rejecting half the list that doesn't contain the required value. Bubble sort is a method of sorting data in an array into alphabetical or numerical order by comparing adjacent values and swapping them, especially if they're in the wrong order. And finally, big O notation is a mathematical notation used to describe the complexity and performance of an algorithm. Now in this particular session, we're probably going to be looking at linear and binary search because there's a bit of a review of those concepts. However, in future lessons, we're gonna be moving on to bubble sort, insertion sort, and then we're going to be looking at big O notation as well. So let's start with the algorithm for linear search. Basically, you set up a search criteria, you examine the first item in the data set. If there's a match, you end the procedure there and then and return the result that the match has been found. If no match is found, you continue to repeat that with the next item in the dataset until you reach either the last item or you find a match. And if you reach the last item and you haven't found any match, you return match not found. Now the problems with this type of algorithm is that it's too slow when the lists become oversized. If you've got a small list, they're very fast. However, if you've got a list which has millions or billions of data items, it can become very slow. And as a result, the processing overheads on less powerful devices become huge. You've got a powerful machine, you can probably do a linear search very easily. You've got a less powerful machine and the same data set becomes a lot trickier to handle. So the algorithm in itself is pretty straightforward. So let's begin by looking at the pseudocode. This is one possible implementation in pseudocode of a linear search. We normally stick with this particular notation because it allows you to include a lot of key terms like upper bound, lower bound, and flags, which are very common in exam mark schemes. And this allows you to obtain the maximum amount of marks in an exam. Each element of an array is checked in order from the lower bound to the upper bound until an item is found or we reach the upper bound. We declare these variables. We set the upper bound to perhaps the length of the list or a value associated, in this case, nine. The lower bound is the first item or the first index. We then, in this case, input an item. We set the found flag to false and we then ensure that the index is set to the lower bound. And then using a loop, you could use a for loop, you can use a while loop, you can use a repeat until loop all of the loops, depending on how you set the conditions, will take you to the same conclusion. So in this particular case, it's a repeat until loop, and the condition we're checking is that keep repeating this piece of code until found becomes true. That means you found the item, or the index is greater than the upper bound. That means the item is not in the list. So what do we do with this loop? Well, we check if the item is at a particular index, so item equals my list index. So we start with the first position, then we check the next one and the next one and so on. And if the item is at that position, we set the found flag to be true. Otherwise, we just simply update the index to index plus one. So you go on to the next index, check position two, and then three, and then four, and keep doing it. And if you found it, set the found flag to be true, else just keep updating the index. Now, once we finish with the loop, either we found it or we reached the end of the list, 
We then put a selection outside the loop where we simply say if found or if found equals true, then output item found, otherwise output item not found. So we use the found flag to drive the output. Now this is a very nice way of creating a linear search and this is something that will get you full marks in an exam. So do pause the video and go through this. Make sure you're familiar with the various different identifiers and the logic of the pseudocode. Now part of the year 13 syllabus is also paper 4 where you need to actually code in Python and linear search is one technique that you might be asked to code. On screen you can see a sequence of code which allows you to conduct a linear search on an array and this is in Python. You could also use another allowed language, that's fine, but we're going to be focusing on Python because it's a lot more forgiving in examination conditions compared to Visual Basic or any of the other allowed languages. So the solution we're looking at is a simple solution using a for loop. You've got an array which is called my list with a few items in there. You get an input from a user, you set the found flag to false, then you use a for loop which starts from the beginning to the length of the array. It compares the item with the data stored at each index position until it finds it and if it finds it then it sets the found flag to be true. Otherwise it just continues on till you reach the end of the list. Now once we finish with the loop, we can just use the found flag to output whether we found something or we didn't find it. So it's pretty straightforward. Pause the video and see if you can code this in Python and see if it works for you. Next we're going to look at the binary search algorithm. This is a mechanism of splitting a data set into two and checking each half to see where the item lies and you continue doing that until you find the item. So you start the algorithm by setting the highest location in the list to be searched as n, that's the upper bound. Then you set the lowest location in the list to be searched as l, which is the lower bound. Next, you try to work out the halfway point or the midpoint, and you do this by adding the upper bound and the lower bound, and then you're working out a div function or divided by two and work out the integer value, or just use two slashes, which is the equivalent of div. If the item is now matched at that index location, for example, then you end the search right there because you found the item. If no, then you can check if the item is less than the midpoint value. If it is, then you set the upper limit. Now you move it from the top of the list to midpoint minus one. That basically means you're moving the upper bound to one less than the current midpoint because you already checked the midpoint. So you force the next search to use the lower half. If no, then that basically means the item is now in the upper half of the list. So you're going to set the lower limit. You move it from the lowest location to midpoint plus one because you already checked the midpoint, it's not there, so the lower location is now going to be midpoint plus one. So you force the next search to use the upper half. Now you continue this process until you either find the item or the lower limit which is the upper limit or vice versa because you've just reached the end of the list and there's no match to be found. Binary searches are pretty straightforward to do because all you're doing is working the midpoint index and then checking that location. Binary searches are more efficient if the list is sorted. If a list isn't sorted, then binary search tends to be a lot more inefficient compared to linear searches. And there are certain conditions where you would not want to conduct a binary search. And we'll look at all of those in a brief moment. So the value of a middle item is checked. And if it matches, fantastic. But if it doesn't match the required item, then half of the list that doesn't contain the item is discarded. And you can use that by simply comparing the value in a sorted list, whether it's greater than or less than, for example. Then the next item to be checked is the middle of the remaining list. And then we discard either side, depending on whether it's greater or smaller. And we continue this process until we find the item or there's nothing left to check in the list. Now to understand how it works, on screen you will see a list of the entire alphabet. And what I would like you to do is work out how you could detect W. So pause the video and then work out how many steps it takes you to find W. So you start on the left hand side and you start comparing it and then you compare it to the next one and you continue on and perhaps 23 steps later you have found W. So a linear search will take 23 steps to locate the character W. A binary search on the other hand, especially on an ordered list like this one, would be much more faster. Let's see how much faster. So first we work out the midpoint. In this case, it's the letter M, which is in position 13. We check whether it's W. If it's not, then we check whether it's greater than or less than. So in this case, it's less than W, so we discard M and everything else to the left-hand side. Then we make N the new lower bound. 
for example, that's the starting position, and we then work out the next midpoint. In this case, it's the letter T. We check that position. Is it W? No, it's not. Then we check whether it's less than or greater than, and then we split the list once again. And on the third step, we end up at W. So within three steps on an ordered list, we found what we were looking for. And that's so much more faster than a linear search. So binary search takes less comparisons than a linear search. Now on screen you'll see the pseudocode given to the right hand side of the screen. So do pause the video and go through that. Make sure you understand the identifiers and then try to perhaps implement this using Python. Now once again we've kept to the same type of identifiers that are used in examination series. So in this case we've got an array, we've got the upper bound, the lower bound, the index, the item, the found flag. We set the upper bound to the length of the list, in this case 9, lower bound can be 0, that's the initial starting position. And then we get the user to input an item, that's what they were looking for, and at the same time we set the found flag to false because we haven't found that particular item. We stick with the same loop structure as the previous algorithm because it makes it easier for us to remember it in an exam. We're going to keep repeating this code until the found flag is true or the lower bound equals the upper bound because you've reached the end of the list. Now what happens in this loop? We first work out the index which is going to be the midpoint which is going to be an integer value of the upper bound and the lower bound. So you take the lowest index and the highest index, add them up and divide by two. That allows you to work out the midpoint and we only want the integer value because we don't want to round it up or be a real value. Then we compare the item to the list and the current index position and if the item matches then the found flag is set to be true. Brilliant, we found it in step one, excellent. But if we haven't found it then we move on to the second selection. If item is greater than the item at the current index then we update the lower bound because we simply say the lower bound is going to be the current index, the current position plus one. So we change the lower bound. If the item is less than the item at the current index then we have to change the upper bound. So the upper bound now moves to 1 minus the current index because you've already checked the index. So you want to set the new upper bound to be lower than the current index. So this way we evaluate each condition and we set the lower bound and the upper bound accordingly. And we keep doing this until we either find the item or the lower bound and the upper bound end up being the same value, which means that you've ended up at the end of the list, either on the left hand side or the right hand side. And then as we did with the linear search, once we get out of the loop, if the found flag is set to be true, then we output item found, otherwise we output item not found. And that's the end of our pseudocode. Again, if you look at the linear search and then you compare the binary search algorithm, you'll find most of the pseudocode to be similar. The only thing that will change is the middle part where we work out the midpoint and based on the comparison with the midpoint, either it's greater than, then we move the lower bound, or it's less than, then we move the upper bound in the opposite direction. So once again, pause the video and have a look at it to make sure you understand how this works. And if you can code this in Python, brilliant. If you can't, now on screen you'll probably see a short loop which uses while because there's no repeat until in Python. This allows you to code a binary search using Python. Now you could take the previous search that we had. You already have an array. You already set up a found flag. You already set up the input part of it. Can you then use this while loop to search that particular list and then come up with the answer? I'll leave that up to you to try and work it out. A quite common question that occurs is, is binary better than linear? Well, if the list is large and if it changes very often with items constantly being added or deleted, then the time it takes to constantly reorder the list to sort it out to allow for a binary search might actually be longer than a simple linear search. So in that particular case, linear would be better than binary. If the list is large and static, for example, a telephone number database, then a binary search is very fast compared to a linear search. If the list is very small, then it might be simpler to just use a linear search instead of adding to the complexity of your algorithm by going into a binary search method. If the list is random, then linear is the only way because for some reason you can't sort the list out, you can't conduct a binary search. Or if you try to conduct a binary search, it's not gonna be very efficient. You might just well hope for something like a bogle sort or some random algorithm which works the answer in that case. If the list is skewed so that the most often searched items are placed at the beginning, 
then on average a linear search might actually be better. Think about it this way. If you have an array with n data items and you want to apply linear and binary search on this particular data set, the worst case scenario could be that the item you want to look for is at the end of that array. Now in the case of a linear search, it would take n iterations to retrieve this item because you're going to check each item in this data set for what you're looking for and you'll probably find it at the end of it. This is known as big O of n in big O notation. A binary search, on the other hand, is not going to be going through each item, so it's going to be splitting things. So the big O notation for a binary search is going to be big O of log n, so it's much more faster in worst case scenarios. And when you're looking at comparing algorithmic efficiency with big O, we always look at the worst case scenario. You as the programmer will need to decide whether an algorithm with a very poor efficiency rating, a big O of let's just say n square, can be utilized because in your use case scenario, it actually might produce results a lot more faster compared to the worst case scenario. You will need to make that decision. Now on screen, you see another example of linear search in Python. This one uses a function. You might find this a lot more easier to handle. So do pause the video and try this one out as well. And next you see an example of binary search in Python using a function as well. And you might find this a lot more effective than the previous versions. It doesn't matter which approach you try. For the paper three exam, you might be asked the pseudocode for this. Whereas in paper four, you might need to code it. So try to remember the approach, the algorithmic approach of how to conduct linear and binary searches and you should be okay with both. Let's draw this session to a close here. You should be able to explain the difference between linear and binary search. You should also know how to implement a linear search and also how to implement a binary search. You should also be able to justify when a linear search might be a better approach to solving a problem and vice versa. In addition to this, you should practice programming linear and binary searches in Python using multiple approaches. So you're pretty confident with tackling these in the paper four exam. That's all for now. If you do have any questions, please do get back to me. Otherwise, I'll see you in the next one.